Okay, thanks everybody. Um, like Jesse, I'm gonna talk about um, more than one thing. We've been doing several things, both in historical legacies and restoration. So I'm gonna try to touch upon both, both of those and Nat will fill in more on um, historical legacies uh, in the discussion. So what's new? Um, one of our new things is we have a collaboration with the trustees of reservations and David Burdick and Greg Moore at UNH on a very large scale salt marsh restoration. The trustees um, have gotten state and federal funding and private funding to restore almost 300 acres of marshland in a very um, extensive um, area. So we'll be working with them on measuring some of the things that they were not planning to, to measure. Um, we have a new DOE funded study on quantifying and modeling the effect of salinity on methane emissions. This is gonna take place in the oligohaline zone. Um, it's being led by Inca Forbrich, uh, Zoe and I, are participating as long with Ben Solman and Terry O'Meara, who were at Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, this also has a fairly large modeling component. And for a long time, contaminants have been a concern at Pi. Um, the salt marsh sparrow, which is an endangered species, has the highest concentrations of mercury on the East Coast. No one quite knows where, why rather. So um, Inca and Dan Orbs from the University of Maths at Lowell are looking at atmospheric mercury fluxes um, at the same site as our CO2 eddy flux tower. And that Weston's been looking at some other metals. And finally, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the work we're doing revisiting extensive mass tr uh, marsh transects that we had done in 2001. So this is um, some of that Weston's work. If you look on the left there in the, in the red dots, that's the concentration of suspended sediment um, coming down uh, estuaries all along the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. Um, you'll see that in general, the Northeast has fairly low concentrations of suspended sediments in the rivers. And if you look below that, you'll see in a lot of the places there have been a, there's been a decrease in those suspended sediments over time, partially due to human dams um, and maybe now due to a little bit with beaver management. The blue dots show sea level rise, which is also um, somewhat higher on some areas of the East Coast and some other areas. So this all leads to the question is, how are the marshes responding to decreasing external sediment inputs while sea level rise is accelerating? And that's been looking at marshes all along the East Coast. Uh, Pi is the second box uh, from the right there. And what he's found is that the rate of sediment accretion is actually accelerating. Um, it's gone, it's going up at Pi at about 0 0.02 millimeters per year, an acceleration of that over our, our rate of um, keeping up with sea level rise that, that ranges from 2.8 to four millimeters a year. Other sites such as Delaware are, are um, increasing even faster. So one of the things we wanna see is What's the limit of this, obviously, but in general, it's sort of good news that sedimentation rates seem to have accelerated in part to keep up with um, accelerated sea level rise. Um, so now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about, again, about some of the restoration work. We have a lot of interesting legacies and one of those is the effects that have occurred on the marsh from salt marsh haying and other hydrologic modifications. So that middle picture shows you um, salt marsh hay, Spartina patens, and beginning with the early colonists, marshes were extensively um, managed to improve the growth of salt marsh hay and to make it easier to harvest. Um, and then in the 1930s, of course, there was extensive mosquito ditching and there's also been road building and culverts. So what you see on the right-hand side there is a sort of a dark area that's an area that was heavily modified and is now experiencing a lot of permanent flooding and loss of salt marsh area. And that's one of the areas that the trustees are going to restore. On the left, you see a blowout of that area going across the road and, and down to the river. And you see those little green dots. That's a transect, uh, one of many transects that we established in 2001 to look at vegetation and elevation using differential GPS. Um, so what our plan now is to go back and revisit these areas and we have revisited about half of them. So what's next? Um, we're gonna resurvey the rest of the transects that we have. As I said, there's about 20 transects. Each one of those has about 20 to 30 points. Um, so we'll have a really good understanding of how things have 
changed over the last 20 years. We were pleased to see that our changes in elevation from GPS uh, correspond very well with those areas where we've established sediment elevation tables and measuring sediment changes every year. Um, we're working with the trustees and these UNH scientists um, to see as they restore what is considered to be a more normal hydrology, how the vegetation returns. Will we see the former mix of high marsh to low marsh? Will primary production return or will the um, sites show some degradation. Um, so this will be sort of one of our experiments foci for the renewal. Um, and it complements the work we're doing on how changing sediments and sea level is impacting marsh elevation. And we um, have our renewal coming up next year. Um, and I didn't mention, but we also have a, a number of um, diversity initiatives um, that we're working on. Um, and I think with that, I'll stop.